I welcome members to the 12th meeting in 2015 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee and ask members to switch off any mobile phones, please. Agenda item one, instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Act of Sederant Fitness for Judicial Office Tribunal Rules 2015, SSI 2015-120, nor on the Pollution Prevention and Control Act 1999, Commencement Number 4, and Amendment Scotland Order 2015, SSI 2015-139. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Yes. The committee may wish to note that SSI 2015-139 corrects an error in the principal order, SSI 2015-74, which was reported by the committee following its consideration of the instrument on the 10th of March. The correction will be made before the principal orders come into force on the 1st of April, which is, of course, tomorrow. Agenda item two, the Carers Scotland Bill. The purpose of this item is for the committee to consider the delegated powers in the bill at stage one. The committee is invited to agree the questions it wishes to raise with the Scottish Government on the delegated powers in the Bill. It suggested these questions are raised in written correspondence. The committee will then have the opportunity to consider the responses at a future meeting before the draft report is then considered. Section 1.1 of the Bill defines what is meant by carer for the purposes of the Bill. Section 1.2b provides that Section 1.1 definition does not apply in circumstances where care is or would be provided under or by virtue of a contract or as voluntary work. Where care is provided in these circumstances, the bill does not apply. Section 1.3 provides that Scottish ministers may make regulations which provide that the contract does or does not include agreements of a kind specified in the regulations. Regulations may also permit a relevant authority to disregard Section 1.2b, where the authority considers that the relationship between the carer and the cared for person is such that it would be appropriate to do so. Power in Section 1.3 appears to be one of significance, as it permits the Scottish ministers to make regulations which could considerably expand or restrict the reach of the Bill's provisions, depending on the manner in which it is exercised. Does the committee therefore agree to ask the Scottish Government for further justification as to the choice of the negative procedure for the exercise of the power in Section 1.3 and why the affirmative procedure is not considered to be more appropriate for this power having regard to the effect that its exercise may have on the applicability of the Bill to particular groups of carers? Yes. Thank you. Section 4 of the Bill concerns the meaning of the term personal outcomes. Section 4.1 provides that personal outcomes means outcomes that would, if achievable, enable carers to provide or continue to provide care for cared for persons. Section 4.2 provides that the Scottish Ministers may by regulations make further provision about personal outcomes, including provision about which outcomes may be personal outcomes, and the matters to which a relevant authority is to have to regard in considering which outcomes may be personal outcomes. Does the committee agree to ask the Scottish Government whether the drafting of the power in Section 4.2 is considered to be sufficiently clear on the basis that it appears to contemplate both the Scottish Ministers and relevant authorities determining which outcomes may be personal outcomes, and further explanation of the relationship between Sections 4.2a and 4.2b, and for clarification as to whether the respective roles of the Scottish Ministers and relevant, outcome, sorry, relevant authorities in relation to this power? John. I think it's very important too that not just uh, government and local authorities but also individuals have a right to determine what are personal outcomes too rather than having imposed on them that this will or will not be a reasonable personal outcome. And I think there has to be very good opportunity for the individual to make a essentially tailor-made personal outcomes too. I hope that's part of the legislation. Thank you. <coughs> I have no doubt that that is something the government will want to make sure is part of the process. Um, what we're looking, I think, for is clarity as to that, that, where that would be specified. Uh, before moving on, the committee may wish to welcome the level of detail and the number of examples provided in the Delegated Powers Memorandum which accompanies the Bill. The inclusion of such information in Delegated Powers Memoranda is extremely helpful to the committee. Still. Um, I, I also, Convener, found uh, the, the structure that's consistently used uh, as it deals with each section uh, to be particularly helpful uh, using, as it does, provision describing 
reason for taking power as a heading and then choice of procedure, I thought was a good way of structuring the discussion, which I don't recall having seen before, and I would encourage uh, um, whoever is the author of this particular memorandum to share that with their colleagues. I think probably the uh, committee and its advisors would endorse that, so thank you for that comment. Uh, I think that completes this item, and uh, I now move us into private for item three.